Well, Panda, he, this is his first season as a competitive player or in the competitive scene in general. We found him at a scouting grounds. In the beginning of the season at Academy, he did have a couple of rough games here and there, but one big thing for me was that he came to me on his own time and also said that, you know, that he's learning and it's gonna take him a couple of weeks. And right after he said that, in the next couple of weeks, we went on our long run. Our, I think we went on a 6-0 run with our academy team. The academy coach, Josh Mabry, also saw his growth in a long time. He did spend a lot, a lot of time with him. And now with Song spending even time with Panda, Panda's skills are only growing and his potential is so high that he's like a raw diamond or we see him like a raw diamond. Now it's Song and the coaching staff's responsibility and duty to cut him into perfect shape. Anytime there's a roster swap on a team like this, it always has to go through management first. And so in our situation, all the coaches and our management and Justin and James sat down and we all talked about why we were uh, just even thinking about using him for scrims. Last rush play have been kind of roller coaster. When we when we make a when we made the lost roster, just we expect the jungler have to lead the lead the support and then that's why we first first time we just figure out the panda situation. The panda is the valuable, he's valuable about the competitive our HS player. That's why just we have, we need a meeting and then in con conclusion we need to just find a new competitive jungle player. Panda has been playing better recently, especially with like what we're, what we're going through. We're on 5-0 run, right? He's still like an academy player, he's a rookie, like I don't know if Putting Panda in the LCS is going to solve all of our problems, right? What we want to look to do is stabilize Rush's condition. So, first of all, make it so he doesn't feel as overwhelmed. So, we're dividing up a lot of the shotgun responsibilities between Apollo and Solo for now. And giving both Hako and Rush a little less responsibility. And then we need to bring someone in who will be competitive with Rush. So, when we feel like Rush needs to take a step back for a little bit and maybe watch a game of scrims or watch a block or play a block on Academy or something to reset, like, we can do that. He's, if you think about Panda, he's good at, like, coordinating a plan, right? Most players like an analyst when you sit down and they go through, like, the nitpicky things or, like, this jungler goes this pathing, all those basic things. It's like when you sit down with a point guard and tell him this is his habit, like, he shoots with his left right instead of his right left. Like, this is his pivot foot, like, he turns blindside right, like, you know, and then usually they don't listen to that, right, because it's boring stuff. But Panda is, like, more proactive about that. At least all the, all, all the players that I've seen, like, he asks more, like, he knows that he's a student of the game. So we started up practice again this week and the scrims are going well. Um, we haven't fully decided who we're going to be using this weekend because, you know, we're, you know, giving both uh, members a chance. But, yeah, I think, I think the, the direction that we're going in is good. So, week six LCS, uh, we all met on Sunday individually to talk about the team and how we wanted to restructure. We all had our individual meetings last Sunday. Um, and this is kind of like talking about the what came to fruition or what came about from those meetings. So um, it's just going to be some quick slides explaining how we want to change our shot calling structure and how we want to go about um, like restructuring the responsibilities from shot calling that we were doing before this. So we look to give Panda a chance to come on stage and prove how well he could play. He's been improving a lot in Academy lately. So we thought it would be fair to him to give him a chance to move up and give Rush a chance to kind of calm down and relax and not have to stress so much. And he ended up being a really good enabler for a lot of the players on our team. He enables Hako to talk a lot more since his comms aren't the best. But what he does is he asks a lot of questions and prompts, which pushes Hakuho and Apollo to talk a lot more. Uh, before Rush came over to NA, we actually scrimmed with Panda for a little bit. Yeah, I think the difference the between uh, you know then and now, uh, the panda then, the panda now, <laughs> he's he's gotten a lot more confident, um, and it's kind of hard to do that. I'd say, if, especially if you're going from like academy to LCS, you know, it is kind of hard to be fully confident just because 
you know, you're playing against a lot better players or you're playing with a lot better players. But even though he listens to us a lot and like, you know, respects our opinion, I still think he has like confidence in himself to like create plans or like to create plays, which is super important as a rookie because if you don't have that level of confidence, then I don't think you're gonna get that far. Do you remember when you guys you guys just won the game because it was <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, to be fair, that game was over. There was no way you guys were gonna was not the end. We no, but he was alive. We were just gonna no, win no, no. the game right there. Was no, 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 no. about to get no, no. a pentakill, no, no. okay? We all saw it. <laughs> you, 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 yeah, <laughs> I thought he was yeah. about to get one shot. <laughs> I was about to win five. I was about to win about the game alone. <laughs> and then we were gonna win the game after that. There's no way you're gonna respect me. There was no way when he was gonna die here. That's for sure, dude. No, there was no way. No, 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 no. We were only down 10k. No, no. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Battle Arena. We are about to jump in for our second game of the day here. It's Echo Fox versus TSM. Rush went 0-2 for the first time, and Echo Fox has subbed in their Academy jungler as a result. Yep, Panda is going to be in for Rush, and Rush really had been struggling. The analyst that's talking about him as perhaps the lowest tier jungler in the league, and Panda going to have a big opportunity here if he can perform with Echo Fox to maybe permanently take over that starting spot. Looking to bring the pain down onto Apollo, but instead it's going to be turned around. Acadian's moving in now, but Smoothie's taken very low. The oh. bomb's on his head, and now he's gone. It's first blood of Echo Fox. Really well done here from Panda, getting first blood for the team in his first LCS game. Against TSM, we had a really strong early game. We had a really good plan for Panda coming into the match. We had laid out what we wanted him to do and kind of just try to give him as much help as possible since it was his first LCS match. And he executed really well on everything we told him to do. He had a lot of good timings where he knew where Kadian would be so he could make advantages elsewhere on the map. That's why we got first Dragon and some of the other ones going after that. Kadian trying to start up the blue buff of Panda, but now Panda recognizes he's here. Broken Blade nearby, first on the rotation. Echo Fox good look to make a 2v2 go off. They're gonna find Broken Blade and burst him down. Looking to break him even further. The Realm Warp comes out. Can Broken Blade get out? Yes, he can. TSM disengage. I, I, I need to hit my knockout. Mouthy's here right now. Mouthy's here right now. I'm almost in range. Right, hey, wait, I'm, I'm in range now. Look, I'm in range now. Look, 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 look. I'm gonna look at flash combo. Hey, hey wait, she, she missed. She missed. She missed. Remember there? Rise, 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 rise. This guy's second, okay? Rise dead. I yeah, yeah. combo in five. And then we look to start with after. Good shit, guys. Good shit, guys. Holy Let's fuck. go. Now no, no, I'm gonna pre stable, go. okay? All right. I, I stuck in no. But Echo Fox is looking like a well oiled machine. I'm honestly so impressed yeah. with how Panda has been fitting in so far in this game. Yes, it is just 14 minutes into a game, but he has impressed me more than this game that I feel like Rush has the entire season. And everything seemed to be in our favor until we got to about 20 minutes or so. And the team kind of hit this wall where they didn't really know what they wanted to do and how to play out the mid to late game. And instead of just killing more turrets and pushing our advantage that Apollo had got in the bot lane or our jungle had made, we kind of just stalled around Baron, not really doing anything, letting them push out the waves. I mean, the Scuttle basically is kind of baiting them almost a little bit. It's actually, the Scuttle is even down, so they had no vision whatsoever, and they are But on now it's time to go. The TPs are both going to be channeled. It'll be Solo in position first. He's coming in with the Slicing Maelstrom, looking to keep Idiot. everybody away, but into the team they go! And it's stolen away by Acadian! TSM finds the kill on the Solo, and now can they find anything else here in the fight? Broken Blade in the back line, looking for multiple people, not quite going to find it just yet, gets disengaged. Hawkwell gets himself out, but Echo Fox are behind enemy lines. And then we get to this really awkward position too where Ryze takes both of our Nexus turrets. And then at that point, we can never win the game because we can never leave our base. But we're also not giving up the game, so we're just trying. So we look like we're just like taking anything we can, but at the same time, whatever we get isn't good enough. So it was kind of rough. TSM has found themselves the Elder. Into the base they go. Hit Smoothie and Bjergsen looking for the damage onto Phoenix. The Ignite will burn him away and surely that will end the game. However, Panda has been able to find a kill on this bench, so maybe not. Okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Acadian taken down next, and Echo Fox continues to hold. Back into the base, it's Bjergsen onto the Nexus itself, as Hawkwo tries to stop this. Bjergsen Apollo. has almost no mana ready to go. It's Apollo trying to save it, but TSM will find the win. No, it's over. I think I was really nervous coming into the first match because I really didn't want to disappoint in my debut. But luckily we were the second game and once I saw the first match, a lot of both teams were making a lot of mistakes so I felt comfortable that I could perform. So anytime that you bring a rookie or an academy player up, especially when they just came from scouting grounds and they go on stage and they don't have stage fright, they're still talking and they're still being proactive, you have to be really happy for them because 
you see a lot of potential inside of that player and it makes you really proud to see that the stuff that you're saying to them and that you give them as a game plan, they're holding that in, they're retaining it and they're actually able to execute upon that. And that's not something that happens really often. You see a lot of players who go on stage for the first time and either they don't talk or they're really nervous and they make a lot of mistakes. And it's like those small little things that they just kind of get your mind out of the game and it distracts you and you don't have your best performance that you could have. Whereas with him, he was like everything, he was right on top of it. He remembered everything we told him and he was just ready to go. James, I think he kind of knew his position where, you know, I'm going to listen to the, you know, the four other veteran players and I'm going to, you know, just kind of play my best and try to respect their uh, decisions the most, right? It would make the game a lot more stable, which is what we really needed. Uh, and yeah, he's doing a really good job. He played really well on Saturday against TSM. We all kind of played poorly on Sunday, so let's not talk about that. Gonna be an exciting game to watch for. Clutch Game and Echo Fox on the rift here for game one of the day. Let's see who can do it. Draft, I don't think, went necessarily the way people expected, uh, especially on our side. Clutch did a really interesting flex draft where they had a bunch of picks that could go in any which lane. And it got to this point where we kind of drafted ourselves into a hole, I feel like. Okay, next one's gonna be a knockup. Not gonna go for this one, only the wave clear, and we know Panda's nearby. Over the wall, gonna find a bit of damage. Does he force out the flash? Might have to. Demonte trying to run. Does have to go over the wall. Will there be a chase? Yes, Phoenix wants his Q's gonna land. He's gonna have that. No, the wind wall blocks the entire ultimate, and there's no follow through. Tanner stays alive. We just weren't really creating plans for ourselves, uh, and it just kind of felt like we're slowly losing or we just weren't really confident in doing anything ourselves, which I think is super bad. Booney's still on the chase, burning one flash. Here comes Piglet. Oh. They're gonna find one, a knockup for a second. The knock back, Aqua will still drop, and they're going for another one. Lyra knocks them right back in in front of the turret, and that's gonna be the shutdown. Three quick kills for Clutch Gaming. I mean, the Clutch Gaming just like lost mechanically. They won both solo lanes, ball lane, we were just even farming, and then when they took our turret, we didn't really know what to do with it. Like, we couldn't make a play because we would lose team fight, and we couldn't really deal with the split push either. So I think just our team comp wasn't as strong once we fell behind. And you can see Solo's down in oh. the bottom lane, so they're going in. Flash pull, Bryce, a little bit of damage, and Panda's gonna lose the Guardian Angel. Now the engage is Aqua's in the back line, looking at that play, but Apollo's already gone. Demonte found that one. Phoenix forward, pops the Zonius. Huni does the same thing, though, and they're gonna find two. They get three kills already. 5v2, the chase is in. Panda's endangered, he's gone already. That's the ace. Clutch Gaming gonna walk over this one. And Clutch with an emphatic win here over Echo Fox. Very nicely done, and Echo Fox now back to back, 0-2 weeks. Even though we had a 0-2 weekend, I saw it as a win for the org in general because um, Panda, first of all, it's his first time taking stage, and his communications on stage was very, very good. It was phenomenal. Not every player is perfect and we're looking to create the best dynamic and synergy in our team. In any sport, or any traditional sport, and esports too, there's always that one all-star. But then that one all-star can't always make everything happen. And that's because it's always more about the team dynamic that's most important. The team is what wins the game, not the individual. Panda played very well, and going forward, we see a very bright future for Panda. We saw really clean early games in both the matches, both against TSM and CG. While after that, we had some issues. That's to be expected when you bring in somebody new like Panda. He doesn't have that veteranship behind him to be able to lead throughout the later stages of the game. Seeing that, we know that there's potential for him to improve. And since we're in the position we are already in the season, it's better for us to try new things and give these guys stage time and try and figure out if we can improve going into later on in the split or even summer. And I think so far, it's working out really well for us. We play FlyQuest and Optic this week, and we still need to get a 2-0 to go to playoffs, so that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, this weekend is super important. Like I said, I'm pretty sure if we don't 2-0, we cannot go to playoffs. Or it's like the smallest of smallest chances. And it's good that we're going against teams that we've actually beat before, so it kind of gives us confidence. And I think both those teams are, they're still strong, but you know, I think you know, we match up against them well. So as a whole, our roster is pretty much nine players new this year. So going into spring split especially, you know it's not always going to be the easiest split and you're going to have a lot of growing pains. We know that we're working towards summer and our performance in summer is what matters the most. For us, we're focused on the bigger picture of things. If we don't make it to playoffs this year, obviously we want to, but the idea is to give our players as much experience as possible and build a roster that'll be able to carry us through summer split.